Hey guys, this is the tutorial about what we went over in class for the second assignment, creating GS. Uh, we'll be going over the creation of the main edge loops of the face, which are incredibly important when we make characters. Uh, I remember going over it in class, but just to go over it again, um, there are certain things in the real world and in the stylized world which we, may, we have to maintain to make characters believable and also functionally workable when we come to animate. Um, and one of the biggest ones for me it's just maintaining an underlying skeletal structure or, rem or remembering that there is an underlying skeletal structure to our characters. Now there are three main uh, places we have to maintain when we're doing 3D modeling and those are the edge flows around the eyes, around the muzzle and around the lips. Now if we imagine uh, the musculus uh, structure underneath, we've actually got a literally, just like we've got this this green section here, we've got a green ring, we've not got, we've not got a green ring, we've got a ring of muscles underneath the eye, around the eye, pardon me, around the eye, which uh, allow us to blink and flex our eye, our, our, our eyelids, um, and then there's a ring of muscles around the lips, which basically allow us to purse, pout, pull, open, close, and whatever sort of muscles, uh, whatever sort of actions we want to do with our lips. Now, in the real world, there isn't a ring of muscles around the muzzle like this. They're actually fanned going out towards our cheek. But we have kind of, over the years of doing 3D modeling and in the industry, we've kind of developed this muzzle around the face here, which helps us dictate any movement in the top of the nose, helps us uh, frame the mouth, and helps maintain any sort of so because uh, there's going to be a lot of deformation around the mouth so we want to make sure that we've got a frame for that so that everything that's vital is maintained inside this area and this is basically just allowing us to say right everything inside of here is cool everything outside of here um, is not going to directly affect it around the eyes uh, we have what I call the, the Zorro mask or the bandit mask and this is basically just a, a mask that we make to frame the eyes so that again, just like we have down here, we can say everything inside here works. Because this is the eyes of a character are very, very important. We in every, in any sort of character with eyes, we do have a lot we, we look at the eyes first of, of any character. We see the emotion, we see the intent, we see any sort of expressions from the eyes immediately, unless the mouth is the main focal point, but generally it is the eyes. And around all these different examples here, we've got this sort of mask going around the eyes, a mask going around the lips, and a mask going around the chin. And here we've got some we've got some examples um, of just really good edge flow being used to deform a face. You can see it in this top right version here. We've got a smile which is pulling the nodules of the mouth into themselves. We've got here where we're doing like a scowl, and everything's kind of collapsing into itself here. We're pursing our lips here and kind of stretching our eyebrows up. So then we're using the eye mask to just basically pull these up to give our expression there. And then we're pursing our lips here. So everything's kind of falling into itself. And here we're pouting, so we're bringing all these edges together. Now what you'll notice on all of these, each one of these examples, is the edge flow. And an edge flow is basically a an edge, which is the opposite edge is its next flow. So if you, if you fall around this yellow line, you'll see there's no right angles everything's flowing into itself, everything's flowing into its opposite neighbour and with these same down here same around here as well and that's so when we're animating and we lift up our eyebrows we're not kind of, we're not bringing if I go back to Maya I can show you um, and I'll make this into like that. So this is an edge flow, let's say. So what we want is that when we kind of like we open our eyebrows, I would apologies doing that. It's stretching laterally. And if we kind of scowl, then our topology is crushing like this. So even though we are deforming and distorting a texture, it's been pulled along a regular axis, which is this edge going to this edge, going to this edge, and going to this edge. So it's like a straight line going through. What we should never do, or what we need to try and avoid, is movements like this. 
but we've got, oh, we've got something turned on. Excuse me, there we go. So we've got movements like this, where we're pulling two opposite corners towards each other. Let me flatten that up again. So we need to avoid anything like this. Because you see how it's, it's, ha it's having an effect on this edge up here? It's then morphing this edge, and it's crushing this edge. So that you're kind of you you're doing an unusual movement with your texture. So if we were to say our eyelids open that way, or our our eyebrows express that way, and they open up, we're pulling this texture, and the and the pixels are going to get pulled and stretched and deformed in a very negative way. But if we express like that. Then we're pulling up. We are still deforming the pixels, but they're deforming in a very regular way, which um, is much more akin to realistic muscles or real world muscles. So, with this sort of stuff, all I can really say the best thing to do is just research, research, and research. Research both um, in game, in animation, edge flow, just see what other people are doing, see how other people are doing it. Because there's lots of different ways. They'll all be sticking to this principle, but faces will be made up in different ways for everyone, depending on um, the purpose that you've been used for. Also, look. I mean, this is probably the most vital. Just look at a human face. Look at a human face with skin. Look at the skull. Look how the skin is pulled over these landmarks of the skull, like the the ocular cheekbone, the mandible, the chin, the nasal, the frontal lobe. See how that's all pulled over. Try and notice how a skull is in, is interacting with um, our, our skin, is interacting with our skull. Um, and also look at the muscular setup of human faces. I mean, look how muscles are actually set up and look how they mimic, how we are mimicking them in our edge flow. Um, and I think that will help you understand a lot more. Just do the research. Go out there. It's, you know, it, it won't take you long. And just sit there and just read up. Do a bit of research. Watch a few lectures. And you'll understand it completely. So, with that said, let's make our project. So I'm going to set a new project. Remember that we're going to, like everything else, we need to have a brand new project for this. And I'm going to file, project window, set a new project, Jesse three because I've already got two projects made already like this. Um, so my location is going to where I want it to be going to when I click accept. Now I've also got my images for my character. I've got these two images set up. Remember when we went over in Photoshop to set them up? So I won't be going into that. But we've got our front and we've got our side view. Remember, I'm going to drop those inside my source images folder of my project stack so that every time we open up Maya, we've got a clear connection to pull those images from and we're not going to get those um, purple frames that we sometimes get. So I'm going to move those over to my Jesse folder when I can find it. So now with those images in my source image folder, I can go to my for view, go to my front view, which is the bottom left, images, image plane, front, drop that in, and there's a side view, view, image plane, import image, side. Now I can go back to my perspective view, because I'm going to start scaling these up, and I'm going to make these very big, because I want enough, I want quite a lot of uh, area to work with. And then I'm going to move that up until she stood on top of the world, like so. And there you go. Now, remember when I went over in class, we want to make sure that these image planes are out of the way, but not so out of the way that we can't reference in perspective. We want them in a nice workable position so that we can move around our object and we're not going to get obscured by the image planes. But the image planes aren't so far away that if we try and reference the image in perspective to the image on our image plane, we're not looking at an image which is far, far away. Cool. And, re and also... Remember, this is a 2D image that was hand-drawn. There is going to be discrepancies between the two. Um, they're very slight, but the discrepancies I've found are the eyes are a bit small on the side view, and the nose is a little bit higher on the side view. 
so I'm going to use my front view as my main source of reference so as long as it's meeting up with the front view the best that's good and obviously I'm using the side view to get my shape of the skull, shape of the face uh, and my other general shapes in there like the shape of my jaw and where my ear is cool so with that set up I'm going to do my first save so then we can start actually building our model so I'm going to go Jesse and so on just save so first things first I'm going to start making the eyes because again for me the eyes are the most important part of a character absolutely most important we look at a character first and unless there's a mask obscure in this character um, we're going to look at the eyes first because the eyes have all the intent of the character in there um, the old quote goes the eyes were screaming you know of course you can hear the character scream but if you can see the eyes screaming uh, it's a lot more uh, emotive if that need to be and one thing we're going to do as well is we're going to look at yeah, there we go. we're going to look at the skull because what we're going to do is we'll, we're literally going to trace the ocular we're going to trace a lot of these different features and I'm going to come into camera mode now and with my with my finger I'm going to literally trace from the center of my forehead center of my eyebrows should I say sorry I'm going to trace my eyebrows around and you can you can feel the ocular cavity there you can feel that as you move around to the side you can feel it bend around to the side and that's where you've got a bit of a bend in your skull there like a bit of a flattened area that pivots up you've got that bend around there and it falls around to the bottom of your eyelid literally you can just feel it flowing around and you can go around to the bottom of your cheek or the top of your cheek bottom of your eye and again you can feel that go up and over your nose and the whole thing begins again on that side so we're doing a lot of referencing to human forms inside so you know when in doubt you've got your own form there if you're ever struggling with hands you're ever struggling with legs or with feet or with the face you've got your own self there that you can use as a reference because even though this is a cartoon character the parallels between realistic and cartoon are um, the same so what we're going to start off with is all these new features we're going to make now that the eyes the muzzle and the lips are all going to be made through cylinders so this is all we're going to make. Now I want to maintain quite a low poly count at the beginning so that I'm making the big gestural shapes. We're making, we don't have to worry about the, the precise shape of these objects just yet. We're making the big gestural shapes. If you were to squint your eyes and look at this character, what are you going to see first? You're not going to see the fine detail, you're going to see the very big detail. So for the eyes, I'm going to make a 12 sided cylinder. So I've just drug my cylinder out there and I'm going to make it. 12 axis divisions here and I'm just going to get rid of the caps on top and the bottom so from the front view that's all I've got there you go and I'm going to just go into perspective mode I'm going to grab the front of the of the cylinder and just move it in a little bit maybe back a little bit so from the front view we've now got this and if we place over the eye things start to make a little bit more sense quite quickly remember we've got this here we've got that there things are, get, things are making sense fast now as I've gone over in class I like having this equal division so we've got a division going across there and we've got a division going across there and with this I like to use the division going across the center horizontally as where my tear duct is over here like this region is where my tear duct is going to be and this region is where my sclera is going to be and my sclera is the edge of my eye on the outer part and I am going to quite simply divide this in half effectively I'm not actually going to physically divide it in half but everything above this line all these edges here they're going to make up my top of the eye and all these edges down here they're going to make up my lower eye, my my lower eyelid, and I'm going to maintain a. I'm going to try and maintain as equal division going around as possible. So I'm not going to have edges bunched up to each other. I'm going to make sure everything's nice and equal um, distribution. So I'm going to turn on ghost mode just to make it easier, 
and I'm just going to go in for the center of the eye first and just start making big movements so I'm not being precious with anything just yet I'm just getting a very basic eye shape in there just like that and then going around the bottom tracing you we are effectively just tracing the eye at this point there we go and that's it for the in for the center of the eye that's fine now we need to move the exterior part here into a much more manageable shape so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tracing um, the external part here we're going to be tracing down to the bottom of the cheek uh, and I'm going to be tracing around to the interior of the nose around here and then to the top of the eyebrow and then we're going to join that up in a bit so going back into ghost mode I'm going to start tracing the bottom of the eyebrow and I'm going round and just moving stuff into place now one thing to remember is you, the, bot, where the top of your cheek and the bottom of your eyelid here is a smaller area than the top of your eyebrow here there's a, there's a, there's a longer distance between your eyebrow to your top of your eyelid to the bottom of your eyelid to your top of your cheek there's like a shorter, shorter distance there and the one thing I'm also maintaining when I'm going around moving these into place is I'm not oh excuse me right so what was it to yeah what I'm maintaining is uh, I'm not having any edges that are like this I'm not pulling any funny shapes like that I'm not I'm trying I'm trying to avoid these sorts of shapes here I'm trying to make like a fan effect with my geometry so that everything's kind of moving away from our object quite normally like that now my eyes aren't perfect at this stage but we don't have to worry about that we're just getting the general shapes in there um, and this I am yeah I'm just getting these shapes into place from the front view because what you're gonna notice when we go to the side view we go to things are in the wrong position altogether and that's fine that was meant to happen all we've got to do now is just like we did with the front where we move stuff into position we do the exact same but from the side now this takes a little bit of a uh, forward thinking because um, this bit can be easily kind of over over complicated or where you worry too much about it so I'm gonna go into my uh, my for view and I'm just gonna grab this center if you hover over this center you get this line I'm just gonna move that up so I'm only looking at my front and side view and I'm effectively just going to use these as a reference point for stuff to move stuff into place and I'm gonna go with my exterior of my eye first so grabbing going around grabbing um, these different sections that's the top of my eyebrow or top of my eye lid area so I'm gonna move that into place and I'm literally just gonna go around and start to trace where things go now remember we're doing this to the skull We're doing this as a skull, so we need to kind of trace the the ocular cavity. We need to trace. We need to be aware of how, from the front and from the side view, how these different positions relate to each other. Uh, like I said before, we don't have to be like super perfect with it just yet. We're just getting stuff into the general shape. Uh, I'm just going to turn ghost mode on here on so I can see what I'm doing there we go okay so now I'm going to do the interior of the eye uh, but one thing to remember um, or to be very aware of is obviously the eye is a spherical object and eyelids 
are made of flesh which is pulled over that object so if I bring a sphere in just to emphasize this uh, I'm going to approximate the size of the eyeball it's not have to be perfect just yet I'm moving to roughly the right place obviously as we bend the eye around from looking from the side here obviously the eye bends round so we won't see as clearly where the tear duct is or where the the edges that are running in, into the tear duct go and one thing we can't have is kind of like a, a diagonal eyelid going across which is flat because then that just doesn't look real and you lose that sense of soft form and that real sense of characteristics um, so going back to my front view again I'm gonna get rid I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna get rid of the eyeball just for now uh, you can keep the eyeball in there if you want uh, I find it just gets in my way a little bit and I'm aware of the shape I'm trying to create so I, I feel I don't necessarily need it that much um, as you can see there's a little bit of discrepancy from the front view and the side view uh, in relation to the drawing so like I said before I'm just going to take that the, the front view as my one to follow and we're not looking for the perfect shapes just yet we're just looking for a good approximation of where these lines are going. Okay. And what I might even do is just select this line here. And if I hit B, I'm getting soft select up. If I hit B once, turns it on, turns off, turns on. If you hold down B and click and drag, you basically size up and size down your influence. And this is basically just a soft select. So if I just select these and move them without that turned down, you can see what's happening. If I do soft select, make it a little bit big, you can see what's happening. It's influence. I'm going to have to turn it a bit more on. But it's influencing a soft movement. And we can use this sort of thing quite a lot to just really start to get a softer form in there. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not, I'm not worrying too much about my eye at this stage. One more little tweak here. Object mode. Okay. And I can feel myself worrying a bit too much. So I'm going to stop. So now, if we go into perspective mode, turn ghost off. Turn ghost off. You can already see that there's something starting to appear. Okay. So in my front view now, I'm going to take uh, these two center ridges here that are almost like in line with my nose these two here and I'm going to extrude those out to the side I'm going to snap them holding X I'm going to snap them to the grid because X is snap to grid remember I'm going to snap them to the grid uh, yours might not snap perfectly in line like mine have so all you have to do is just grab each one and just make sure it snaps to the grid have I got a tool set and turned on there we go so make sure yours are all snapped to the grid like that. And then I'm just going to, because I've studied the character a bit, I'm going to just imagine what the curve of the nose might be from the front. And then from the side, I'll use this side view. I'm going to bring them out, just move them forward. And then I'm going to trace this little curve of the nose here. I'm just trace this, trace this curve like that, and I might even take this edge out as well and do the same. So snap that to the center, bring it out. I'm gonna just merge those two verts together. And now I can already turn it. I can already tell I need to do a little bit of tweaking to my edges. Okay. But that's about it so far. Looking good, looking good. So what I'm going to do is select my object and my pivot is all the way over here. You can see in this area here. I'm going to hold D and V. And I'm going to snap it to the center of my grid there. You can also hold D and X to snap at the center of the grid. 
and we'll go sneak D and V so I'm snapping it to the center vertex right there and then I'm gonna go to duplicate I'm gonna go to edit sorry duplicate spatial options box I'm gonna make sure that instance is turned on and that scale minus one in, in the X remember this first load of boxes is X second Y third Z X Y Z so I'm gonna make sure that scale is set to minus one flip it over and then you can see we duplicated over there the great thing about duplicate with special is that if I do something on one side it's going to do the exact same th thing on the other side so we only have to do like we in a lot of this area in a lot of this model we only have to do half the modeling because it gets done for us by uh, the duplicate special cool now if I go into perspective mode we can already see that our character is really coming into its own already this is this is very noticeably a character this is as this has got eyes and this has got a ridge for a nose already so we're very quickly making our character so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the muzzle which remember goes from the top of the nose around where the laugh lines are and then joins on the chin and for that I'm going to make a 16 sided uh, cylinder so make my cylinder in the middle of the world make sure it's middle of the world I don't matter why there uh, and then I'm going to make that in 16 16 because then I'm still maintaining that cross section there complete those guys and then just like I did with the eyes I'm going to bring in the middle and just bring it forward a little bit now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the duplicate with special but I'm just going to delete half of it first then do the duplicate with special make sure that my pivot is in the middle of my object duplicate with special so again like I said before anything we do on one side is going to be duplicated on the other now one thing I saw in class was people trying to uh, oop, grab it in the options menu in like option in the object sorry they were scaling it and it wasn't scaling on the duplicated side and vice versa on this side it's not going to happen on this side that's because duplicate with special takes the vertex or edge or face manipulation into account so if we select all these vertex and scale it works if we take all these faces and scale it works and if we take all these edges and scale it works but if we just take the object itself it doesn't work so remember if you want to do anything like that you've just got to select it in the vertex or edge or face so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start tracing her top of the nose ridge area round to the laugh lines and then to the front of the chin to where the chin strap would be obviously this is best done in x-ray mode uh, and I'm gonna just move these ones these edges up here a little bit because there's gonna be quite a lot of information around the nose area um, that I have to maintain and then it gets a, it doesn't get as much around this area we will add some in later on but I'm just for kind of future thinking I'm gonna put these three up here and then I'm literally just gonna I'm not drawn in her laugh lines but I've got to imagine where her laugh lines will be um, and just start to push things into position I remember like, like I said we can put other we can put more uh, divisions in later on we can add more topology later on to soften the shape but right now we're just getting that general shape in there and what we're worrying about is just trying to maintain that character's feel in the early stages okay I'm actually going to add one division at this stage for me personally the scruff there so I could have done this with uh, an 18 an 18 uh, div division cylinder instead but I've not so I'm just going to have to go so I just went in there and added that one division oh, my Maya is acting a bit weird today as per usual 
Okay. Right, so rough shape is in there. If I go to the side, obviously shape's not there. But, so this is another webcam section now, and we'll have to try and do this. Okay, so when we're doing our, our laugh line, we have to trace a couple of things. And what we're tracing is we're tracing basically the cheek going down. I've got the beard kind of gets in the way a little bit, but I'm tracing the line going down from the side, from above the top of the nose, it comes down and wraps in the chin. From the front, it makes sense because obviously it's just like a circle like that, but from the side, it might not make sense. So I'm coming over the top of the ridge, down and around, and then coming in like that. This is where soft selection will probably work quite well. So I'm just going to get soft selection. I'm going to do big movements. I'm not going to worry about stuff. I'm just big, big movements. So just get stuff roughly into place first. If you, if you start worrying about stuff, uh, then you start struggling uh, very quickly. So just don't worry about stuff. Just get big, big movements into place. Uh, careful, about, careful about your selections as well. Okay. I'm going to get some weird... Meyer issues going on today. Come on, thank you. And you can even start following, tracing the shape of the nose as well. Now I've got an idea about what's going to go on in this area with mine. So I'm going, I'm not going to join this section to this section. Um, so I'm going to just leave this how it is. It looks very dirty f at first. Um, that's to be expected. We're in the early stages of our model. I'd be worried if it looked finished already. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to perspective mode to see what's going on, see how it's happening. Okay. So I can see I need to do a little bit of stuff here. Again, just roughly getting that shape into place. Um, okay. I'll probably end up coming in and changing that later on. But yeah, I'll definitely come and start changing that later on. And for my own annoying self as well, I'm just going to come in and change that. There you go. <clears throat> so, next thing I'm going to do is make the mouth. I'm going to make that with a uh, probably a 16 or an 18. Uh, sided. Hmm. I'm actually going to go in and make a standard 20 side. So this might veer off from what I did in class, but I'm going to make a. I'm going to just fix this because that's going to annoy me a lot. I'm going to just trace the nose a bit better with that. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to make a standard 20 sided cylinder. Uh, so this is very much veering off from what I did in class. Um, but for the interest of just time and future thinking, um, I'm going to try to save myself some work. So I'm just like my eye, my eye I'm going to take the centre line as where the, the little nodules of my mouth will be. So I'm going to move this into place very quickly at first. Putting ghost mode on. Delete half of it. Duplicate with special over. Saves us half the work. So yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna trace this area out a little bit. Now I'm not gonna make the actual lip shape itself. I'm just basically gonna make the muscles of the lip around it. Um, bit of a bit of a tedious task, but very quickly done. Okay. 
Okay, so remember I'm trying to make these as regular dispersion as possible. So that I'm not getting clumped topology. And then just open topology. So it's a bit dirty at the minute, but um, we can fix that later on. So exactly as, as, as like before, I'm going to change to my view so I've got something like this. I'm going to start moving stuff into place. So this is the stage I'd probably take the longest amount of time on, just because I can uh, get a lot of these shapes in place first. So then if they're working well in this view, in this stage, not this view, sorry, uh, then there's less chance of them being wrong or causing me issues later on. So I'm just going around and just making sure that everything's a little bit softer than they currently are, because obviously this is meant to be a soft character. I don't want any sharp, I want as little sharp edges, hard edges as I can get. So, I'm just going to put a bevel in this mouth crease here. I'm going to put a small bevel. Like that. That's going to help me later on when I come to re, uh, not re apologize but add the uh, edge flow in for the, for the, for the mouth. Okay. We're almost ready to start some serious modeling. Make some drastic steps. Okay, cool, okay. So now everything's in place. We've already can tell this is going to be a character. We can already tell there's eyes, there's and a mouth. And if we look at our skull and reference it to our character in here, we can see the similarities in the nose see that there's the ocular cavity there, you can see that there's a nasal patch there, and what I found with the skull and with this uh, muzzle mask we've put in, you kind of get the same, you get the same sort of flow of edges inside the skull, where it comes down from the nose, crosses into the cheekbone, you've got a curve there, and then you've got that mandible, there's like a curve in your mandible, which is your lower jaw, that curves around, and it does mimic the muzzle mask quite a lot. So, to help me understand the character a bit more as well, I'm going to start thinking about the nose, because for me this character's nose is a, a little bit important. I want to keep it nice and button, I feel a nice button nose kind of quality to it. Um, so I'm just going to make a plane, and this might seem weird at first. Make sure it's in the middle of the world, I can do that by changing my X set into zero. And then put your one division either side like that. So that's my nose right now. And I'm going to get each one of these corners. Turn off soft select. I'm just going to scale it in until I've got a bit of a circle. Make it a bit bigger. And then from the side, let's move it into place. And I'm going to just gesturally trace my nose so some of you might see where I'm going with this now very nice very nice very nice very simple okay so I'm gonna go to my uh, eye patch now I'm not gonna combine these objects at all 
uh, I'm going to go turn on X-ray mode. You can see we've got this line here, and this is basically the ridge of our like the indication where our nose would start to take its ridge, or the flat point of our nose. So I'm going to add a division in there. Actually, what I'm going to do beforehand as well is I'm just going to move these edges in a little bit. Not there. These will help us just shape. This will help us shape our face a bit more. So I'm going to add a single inserted edge loop into there. Spread in, and I'm going to move it. So looking from the front, I'm starting to dictate the flat point of my nose of our character and where it flares out at the top there. And I can do that from the side as well. I can, I'm not going to bring these all the way up so they're flush with the side. I'm going to put a little bit of a bend in there. But that's what I want. You know, even even just by doing that, we're softening out the character a bit more. We're giving the character a bit more personality. I'm going to put another division there. And then... And start to just add a little bit more definition to what is going to be my face. Now, what I what I'm doing now is I'm strategically just making movements, making gestures, just putting stuff in. Um, I might end up coming back and deleting it later on, but just for now, I'm trying to get a better indication, a better picture of the character in my head. Uh, so I'm going to start just uh, making big shapes like I said I'm actually going to add a neck in, very basic neck I'm going to make a cylinder, make it a 8 sided cylinder and then just place it in where the neck's going to be I'm going to side view to place it in as well Trace the basic shape of the neck. Remember, like I said in class, our head is going to be a separate, a physical separate object than the rest of our body, um, and like many assets on our, on our character to be honest, um, as well. So we don't have to worry about having the perfect number of edges at the bottom of the neck, so it should, should match up with the uh, interior of the hoodie. We don't have to worry about that. So okay, so I'm gonna put a division. I'm gonna put two divisions actually. I'm gonna put insert edge loop tool. I'm gonna to put two in the middle of there, and then I'm just gonna make my neck a little bit more stylized like that. Just like that. So that's our neck in place. Something else I might want to do as well is, like I said in class before, um, we want to make big movements first. So I'm going to make the skull shape, the profile of the skull. I'm going to select, I'm actually going to delete this line as well. So I've only got this now. I'm going to select this inner line, this inner edge at the very center. I'm going to do an extrusion and then I'm going to move it backwards to where I think the base of the neck is going to be. So about there. And then I'm going to add 10 divisions going around the head. Because insert edge loop tool will always, only allow us to add 10 at a time. So I'm going to add 10 in there. And I'm going to use those to dictate the shape of my skull very, very quickly. Um, some people might have other uh, methods that work for them. For me, I like seeing the character come out of the, of the environment a lot faster. Because we're looking at a gray space um, for a long time. So the faster I can get a character appearing on the screen, uh, the better it helps me understand the character's um, shape and form and characteristics. So I'm switching back and forth from use to try and get things coming out. And I want to maintain, because it's going to be the front of the character, I want that forehead to 
really be nice and recognizable. Because then it disappears underneath the hoodie or the beanie. Um, and it'll also be hidden underneath some hair. So I'm going to I'm not gonna worry about having tons of edge flow back here. At least not yet. Um, oops. Uh, so I'm going to add another two divisions in this straight line here. Um, you might not have got that, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just the way I'm building it. I just want to justify that curve a little bit more. Bring that back. And then I can start to move these butts around to mimic the flow of the face a bit more. Um, I'm actually going to do something quite drastic here later on, but right now I'm not worried about that. Now what you will notice is we get this sort of divot here. We want to make sure that that gets taken away. Because obviously the top of the skull is more like that shape. So I'm just grabbing edges and making sure we're making much more of a rounder surface. Moving around our object, checking any bad areas. Okay, I'm going to leave like that for the time being, but you can already tell like very quickly through a couple of minutes of work we've already got the shape of our skull in there from the side and if we delete half the neck we can also combine these two objects together so I've got the stuff on my left side combine those you will lose the duplicated special once you do a, com a combination don't worry about that it's naturally meant to happen and I'm going to bridge between these two points here here. I'm going to put a division of two in there. Reapply material because it's acting a bit weird. Object mode. Sign existing. There you go. So now from the front, from the right view, I can just add some shape in there, like that. Um, and then I can come back later on and really kind of define that shape. But right now, that's good enough. I know what's happening. It's very understandable what's going on there. And we can even do the exact same thing with here. But I'm going to add one division going down the front of the neck. Soften it out a little bit. And then I'm going to join these two together. There we go. And maybe put divisions in there as well. So I can oops, just start forming our shapes a bit more and then reapply that material so we've not got that green space in there. There we go. So so far everything's looking really nice and we're getting a lot of shapes appearing which is starting to read very well as a character. Now one, there's one tool inside our modeling toolkit which is very helpful as we're doing this sort of stuff. In transform constraints, if we turn on edge slide, we can slide this edge along and, it's, and so if it was turned off, you can see what's happening there. We're getting this weird angle, we're not very, it's, you know, it's destroying the softness of our character. If we have edge slide turned on, then we can just slide around that edge and that happens with vertex as well. Uh, very good. And I'm just doing a bridge, a, com a combination of bridge here as well, just to get though, just to start making things connect, just to start making sense of the object itself. Um, and I can already see that I've got points I can start to merge together. So if I put a division down here, then I can start to bridge a lot of this stuff together. And then our character starts to appear very quickly. And this is the this is all it is from now on. We just need to 
uh, go around and bridge a lot of these different surfaces because our main features are in here. The eyes are here, the mouth is here, and the muzzle is here. Now before I left this gap open intentionally, uh, and that's because I want to um, control my edge flow a lot coming out of this area. So I want to make a separate, I want to bridge all these together so that I'm bringing a new load of edges out to create the cheek curve here. So bridge that and then bridge that. So again I'm just making these big movements, I'm not being too precious about what I'm doing because working at such a low poly it's easy to uh, fix stuff later on. And I'm just trying to, because uh, the face when you're making these faces it's like a, it's like a puzzle which is hidden inside the 3D space and I'm just trying to bring those pieces out and find all the pieces which make sense, uh, find all the pieces that don't make sense and just start moving them around. So I can see that my muzzle is a bit too, it goes in too much of a steeper angle compared to my eye socket. So I need to start bringing these edges out a little bit more. My mind's running a little bit sluggish. So I'm, my mind's running sluggish. So I'm going to do a save just in case anything happens. Save as uh, Jesse 2. I should have done a couple by now, but um, I forgot because I'm talking my way through this. So, yeah, so now it's just, it really is just making the character, bridging the character, making sure all these different edges meet up, making sure that we're maintaining the shapes and then we're maintaining an edge flow. Um, reference for edge, for what edge flows are and how they work and what is good edge flow and what's bad edge flow. There's a, there's a lot on the internet, um, which uh, is really good um, to just see how you're going along and see if you can um, understand it a little bit more. Because uh, sometimes just sitting there and staring at, a th at an object, if it's not working, and trying to see what's wrong with it, it's, it, just, it just doesn't happen. So... Using reference, you can see that, oh, they've done that like that, they've done that like that. And then it'll help you make a lot more sense. So I'm just going to connect these two to create this sort of... So I'm getting this, I'm connecting my muzzle and my mouth muscle shape together a bit more. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that for... Ta well, I'm not going to leave that. I'll, I'm going to shape that out a little bit more. So our character is starting to make a bit of sense now. Um, there's quite a lot of TLC still needs to be done. Uh, not everything is perfect. But like I said, we're just getting the general shapes in there, first of all. So now I'm going to close this gap and I'm going to do stuff with that later on. So I'm going to start looking at my nose now. Close. And... We can do the nose a number of different ways. We can make the nose very simple and then use um, normal maps and ambient occlusion maps and spec and uh, spec maps to kind of trick the nose to be there um, with no geometry. So we can make like a little flat triangle, well, a soft flat triangle, I would say. It, it can't be too rigid, it can't be too low poly. Um, I'm going to try and make a proper nose. Um, not proper in the sense of realistic, but proper in the sense that it's got a uh, a nostril in there. And I don't, I don't have to go super high poly to do that. I'm going to make a, a six, yeah, a six-sided cylinder because again we're using our cylinders again. Okay, yeah, I'm getting a Maya bug here, so I'm going to save and reset. OK, 
Okay, so my uh, my version of Maya has got a little bit of a bug on it where it stops working. Uh, but now we're back, so don't worry about it. So I'm going to make a kind of like a loop for my nose. That's either going to um, I know it's going to come from underneath my nose and around, but I don't know if um, I'm either going to just completely loop the nose or if I'm going to send it up into the bottom of the eye. I'm not sure just yet. So I'm actually going to make an entire loop for the nose just to start off with. With a... Uh, let's call it a... Uh, let's put a 16-sided cylinder. Um, so I'm just guessing at this point. Um, I'm just guessing what I want to do. Deleting half it again. Oh, actually... Before I do that, I'm going to turn off symmetry for some reason. Why is symmetry on? Computer's acting weird. Uh, move forward. Just get that in. Let's get that down. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Delete half it first. Then do my duplicate special. Okay. So what I'm doing here is, like I said, just making this ring for my nose, um, almost like a cradle. My computer is <laughs> reset its settings. Love. I love crashing Myers. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make a cradle for my nose. Um, almost like a strap that goes underneath it. Like I was talking before about that frame for your, um, you know, framing your whole lower jaw so you can have your lips inside it. We were doing the same thing for the nose, but, um, but we're just um, doing it in a much smaller area. Uh, and what this helps us do as well is maintain that sort of. I know I said that I don't want any sharp edges on this on, on this character, but what I do want is a very clear indication about where the nostrils are. I want those to be visible. I want them to be noticeable. Um, and this isn't a big loop, so I'm going to make it. I'm going to bring those edges in a little bit. Definitely bring these in because these will be actually f uh, flatter from the side. So I'm going to bring those in. Help me out with first. Alright, so from the side view, I'm just going to get that double view up again. And because I'm scared now, I'm going to do another save. There you go. So I'm going to start to make a ring around my nose. Uh -huh. um, just like I've done everything else, so I'm not going to explain hows and whys, I'm just going to going to do it. So there's my rough shape in there. Um, I can then start to just move relative shapes around as well, because obviously this shapes. Uh, I want this shape to happen, so I'm gonna just move other shapes around so they fit together a bit better. And again, I'm taking my uh, front view as my definitive view. How to lay these things out. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to combine these two shapes together now. That's my... Um, back back to so I've made my nostril now. Or I've made my uh, nasal ring here. 
I've got my plane I made for the front of my nose and I'm going to bridge between these two points and I'm going to do the duplicate with special so that it makes a lot more sense to me like that okay. and I'm just going to send this guy down to here as well I can see I've got some misaligned areas there so I'm going to align those Mm -hmm. And from the side, I'm just going to trace a very basic little, little nose and one up there. There we go. So I'm going to make a um, a cylinder now for my actual nostril itself and it's going to be a super low poly cylinder uh, let's call it a six so I'm going to rush through this section now because I'm it's a long video so far Okay, so for sake of argument, I'm going to put it there. Uh, and I'm just going to leave it for the time being. I feel like I've spent long enough on the nose. And I'm going to move away, um, work on something else, and come back to that later on. Because that's already in there. That's, that information is already there and readable. What I can do, though, is uh, actually bring these two together. And uh, let's just split these two up a little bit I'm going to bridge across here like this and then do my duplicate special again so we're constantly going back and forth from duplicate special So I'm going to start trying to get the top of my cranium done and what thing we need to do when we're doing this is we need to um, what we call terminate the edge flow because if we start making our forehead we're going to get loads of different edges and loads of edge flow appearing and if we try and send that all the way back to the back of the skull and then into the neck we're going to find that we've got too many edges going into too fewer um, edges so we're going to have to try and terminate this edge flow into uh, the back of the head because obviously she's going to have a beanie on and there's going to be hair there so even if she does change costume and she goes to another another level dimension um, she's, she's still going to have her head there her hair there or a part of the costume it's going to cover it up and we always try and kill terminate uh, we always try and kill topology in the back of the head so you can see here that we're sending around the topology and it's making this sharp right angle here it's still flowing from edge to edge so it's not like we're going uh, and breaking the edge flow it's still a parallel edge, so this edge is going to this edge, and this is going to this edge, but it's just being sent around to the top of the skull. Same thing's happening here, coming out the side of the eye, going up, and then it's making that turn to the back of the skull. And then underneath there, this is coming out and going into the ear, and then the one underneath that is coming out and going into the cheek. So it's it's quite uh, quite powerful what you can do with edge flow. So I'm going to make three movements. I'm going to make these. This edge here is going to go into the back of my skull. This is going to turn into the back of my is going to go into my ear, and this is going to go into my cheek. So if I select all of them, do my extrude where it says keep faces on. I'm going to turn that off. So now I have three separate faces. Let me do that again. Let me do that again. Boom, boom, boom. Extrude. Key faces on. Key faces off, should I say. And then extrude. There we go. And there we go. We've got these three separate edges that I have to worry about. That I, that I, that I only have to worry about. Okay, so I'm just going to 
move this down. So that's going to go into my cheek. This here is going to be going into my ear, so I'm going to move it over here. And this, I want going into the top of my skull, and I might say that I want it going into uh, this part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make drastic movements now. And I'm not going to merge. I'm just going to pin, I'm going to uh, select the edge, then snap to vertex into that corner. So this might not work, but I'm just trying to make a shape so that I can think, right, I'm going to send stuff in like that. So if we look at our reference here, we've just basically done that. We followed this here, we followed around. So everything next to that, going into the to the middle of the face, is going to then turn into well, the next one does. In this example, they then go around to the back of the head, because this model has a lot more edges going into the neck than ours do at the minute. Like before, I'm just going to make big movements, just get stuff making a bit more sense in my head. Like I said, it might not work, I might end up uh, completely throwing everything I've done away. But I'm just, I'm just making movements. I'm not being precious about the model. Okay. That's actually looking okay. Okay. So now I'm thinking about this hole here, this hole I've made here. I am actually going to merge those because it's going to be a bit easier to work with now. So I've got this hole here at the top of my cranium. And all I have to do is worry about how I'm sending edges to the rest of the model. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with this edge. Here. So I'm going to merge that, bridge that, should I say, and then we're going to put three divisions in. Reapply my material. Reapply my material. Oh, so Maya's kind of starting to uh, bring that bug up again. So I'm going to save. Did I save? I saved. Save it again, just in case. Yep, got that right. I'll save. So if ever your Maya is starting to throw up some uh, some little weird bugs it starts to do, just save it as soon as you can, um, just to save yourself losing any work and losing any progress. From side view, I'm going to start arranging stuff into place. Now I also want to start mimicking the flow of the skull. But stuff very quickly starts to make uh, sense to me. So as you can see there, I've made some super drastic measures. I've just uh, gone in and just finished the top of the cranium just to make sure I can just make some shapes in there. Still thinking about what my edge flow is doing. And how it's going to affect my model later on. Because I still might not stick to this um, as it is at the minute. I might change it later on.
Now to just help me speed up what I'm doing because I'm worrying a little bit too much, I'm going to go into the sculpting tool and I'm just going to use the smooth brush just to very gently knock it back. Help get a bit of form back in. Like that. And then I can use the uh, grab tool to just move it back out. So I'm going to cut away and just keep working on this and then when I come back I'll have um, a much more finished and refined model for you and I'll explain what I've done and how I've gone about it.